All right, hello everyone. Welcome to the WinUI community call. Uh, my name is Anna, I'm a PM on the WinUI team and I run these WinUI community calls every month. So thank you all for joining. I'm gonna go ahead and get into our PowerPoint. Um, a little bit about the community call. So these take place on the third Wednesday of every month uh, at 9 a.m. Pacific. Our next call is going to be on May 19th. Uh, in the meantime, you can always find us on GitHub and on Twitter. On Twitter, we're always posting updates about the latest news. And on GitHub, you can do things like do feature requests, ask questions, start discussions. So lots of great ways to connect in the meantime. All right, so for today's call, uh, I'm going to do a little intro. I'm going to talk about some roadmap updates and show you the roadmap for all of WinUI. Uh, I'm going to talk about our latest releases, what's coming next. And then we will be welcoming the .NET MAUI team to give a little presentation on what they do. Um, and then, of course, we will have our Q&A at the end. So let's talk about what is WinUI. WinUI is the native UI platform for Windows 10. It's built for today's modern hardware and devices. It offers the latest fluent styling. Uh, you can use WinUI to build rich .NET and C++ apps for Windows 10 devices. And WinUI also powers the Windows and Xbox OS shells, as well as many apps, uh, like, and also platforms like Xamarin Forms and React Native for Windows. And we'll be hearing more about MAUI today. Um, so WinUI has two generations. WinUI 2 is the second generation of the native UX stack in Windows, and it's built for UWP apps. WinUI 2 consists of the visual layer and the XAML framework in the operating system and a library of Fluent-based controls and style that updates trimesterly. WinUI 3 is a new third generation of this native UX stack in Windows, and it's currently in preview. So it consolidates the UX technologies previously built into Windows into a single decoupled framework and made available for every type of Windows app. So let's get into the next slide here. We have our roadmap. Just get all the animations on. OK, so um, let's see what we have here. So as you can see, we are in April right now. Um, and so the first half of this roadmap shows everything that we have previously shipped. So we shipped WinUI 2.5, WinUI 3 Preview 4. We shipped our first preview with Project Reunion. That was the 0 0.5 preview. And we also shipped Reunion 0 0.5, which was our first supported stable release. Um, of WinUI 3. And in April, we just shipped a patch to Reunion 0 0.5. It was called Reunion 0 0.5.5. Um, and you can expect to continue to see these key fixes coming into WinUI 3. And you can expect to see 0 0.8 previews start happening in this time frame. Uh, so hopefully we will have that first 0 0.8 preview very soon. Um, and yeah, sorry, I'm getting comments that maybe my audio is lost. Um, give me a sec here, folks. Hang on. Let's see what's happened. Oh, looks like I muted myself in Teams. Uh, hey, Winnie UI team, hopefully you guys can hear me again. Somehow I got muted, but I think I'm back. Um, okay, let me make sure that everybody on the stream can hear me as well. I think you guys should be able to. All right. <laughs> and Back everyone to the roadmap. can hear you on the everyone can hear you on the stream. It's a little um, choppy, but they can understand what you're saying. So I just keep rolling. Okay. Let me see. Maybe if I change it to this microphone instead of my. Oh, they're saying it's they're saying it suddenly cleared up. Somehow you is magically it fixed it, Anna. Yeah, you fixed it. You're good. Okay. Hopefully this is good. Just keep the feedback coming. If I have to change it again, I'll I'll change it. Let me know. Uh, all right. Roadmap stuff. Um, so as I said, we hope to see, uh, you guys can hope to see that point eight preview, uh, coming soon. Uh, and that will include more bug fixes, stability improvements, as well as all of those experimental features that were introduced in the point five preview. Um, so in June, we, it, June's going to be a very exciting month. <laughs> you're going to see the WinUI 2.6 release. And so in that release, you're going to see new controls like Pips Pager, Expander, Animated Icon. And these will then be added to the Reunion 0 0.8 stable release. Um, so Reunion 0 0.8 will 
include not many new WinUI 3 features, but it will include those WinUI 2.6 features and a ton of bug fixes. Um, and then at that point in June, the previews for the Reunion 1.0 release will begin. So you can start using even more new experimental features at that point. So then in October, that's when we expect to see a uh, Reunion 1.0. And that's when we'll get a lot of new WinUI 3 features. And then, you know, as the schedule goes, 1.1 previews will begin. And I'm sure that you guys can imagine what the rest of the schedule looks like. Um, and then in late 2021, we also expect to see WinUI 2.7 which will be even more exciting features and controls, uh, and those will be added to Reunion 1.1. So hopefully this clarifies kind of what's coming next for WinUI All Up. Um, if there are questions on this, definitely drop them in the chat and we'll answer them in the Q&A. All right, let's talk about what just shipped. So that was Project Reunion 0.5.5. This was a smaller patch release that included a bunch of critical bug fixes. Um, so a few of the bug fixes that it included was a fix for the memory leak um, caused by issues in C Sharp WinRT. Um, it fixed the bug for the acrylic brush rendering transparent. Alt F4 not closing desktops that works at uh, desktop apps that works now. Um, and also the Project Reunion Foundation package, breaking on WPF compilation, I believe that's also been fixed. Um, so if you want to see the full list, you can follow that link that's displayed down there. We have a full list of the bug fixes on our actual announcement. Um, and if you want to get these changes, you can um, pick up this latest package in your existing app. Obviously, you can build a new app with, you want, if, with it if you want to, but if you want to get these changes into your existing app, you can go to this link. We just published a new documentation on how to get your app to the latest version of Reunion. So this is all great. Uh, really excited to see this release shipped and these bugs fixed. I know these were critical bugs, so I really hope that um, this release is helpful to you all. Um, and next up, as I briefly mentioned, we will have our Project Reunion 0.8 preview. In this next preview, you can expect uh, Pivot Control will be available once again for you to use in WinUI 3. Uh, as Ryan kind of, I think he went over that on our last call um, and on GitHub, there's been a lot of conversation, but Pivot Control will be available for you all to use again in the upcoming 0.8 preview. Um, this preview will include the bug fixes from 0.5.5. Uh, um, it'll also have new bug fixes, uh, feature stability improvements, just things to really um, you know, get us even more stable for the 0.8 release. Um, and then it'll also have all of those experimental features from WinUI 2.6, but also from uh, past WinUI and Project Reunion previews, like the 0.5 preview. Um, so if you've been using those preview features that are only available in the preview builds, those will continue to be available in the 0.8 preview. So uh, that is a lot of info about WinUI, but now uh, I think we're gonna move on to our ecosystem spotlight. Um, I'm really excited to welcome the .NET MAUI team here today. Uh, we are welcoming Maddie and David, who are two of the PMs who are working on MAUI, .NET, and Visual Studio. Um, so I think that I'm just gonna let them go ahead and take over here and tell you guys all about .NET MAUI. So uh, Maddie and David, let me know when you guys are ready. Yeah, I'm ready. Maddie, you ready? I'm ready. I'm trying to turn on my camera, so hopefully everything stays good. There we go. Enough cameras. Um, okay. Cool. I, I'm going to share my screen, too, if that's cool. Yeah. All right. Um, yeah, so I'm David Ortnow, Principal Program Manager on the .NET team, working on uh, all things .NET MAUI, um, as well as a little bit of Visual Studio. And then, of course, we have the legacy uh, Xamarin work, um, which you know, it's not legacy yet. It's still, it's still very good and uh, what you should be using today. Um, let me, uh, I can't talk, apparently, and share my screen at the same time. So here we go. Uh, Maddie, why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself while I do this? Sure. Yeah, I'm Maddie Legere. I'm uh, also a PM on the Xamarin slash Maui team with Dave, and my focus is really on tooling and developer productivity. So hopefully, making your life easier when you're working with Xamarin and .NET Maui. So mm -hmm. Dave is the uh, the SDK guru, so he's going to take us through a bunch of stuff here, and I'm just here to commentate a little bit, <laughs> fill in the gaps. 
Cool. So I uh, will give a quick overview of what .NET MAUI is. It is an acronym. Don't we all love acronyming our project names? Um, and so it stands for Multi-Platform App UI. And uh, you know when we think about how we expect within .NET and we want .NET developers to understand clearly what's the best way for me to make a cross-platform, multi-platform application, whether I'm starting on desktop, going to mobile, starting on mobile, going to desktop, or finding a way to blend web into that whole mix, uh, or maybe web is the mix and you're trying to extend that to mobile and desktop. All of those are possible and made much, much easier with .NET Maui. So, uh, it is all part of .NET 6, which ships this November. Um, and in terms of the iOS and the Android SDKs, as well as our project system and a lot of like the debugging pipeline and things like that, this is really about us unifying with the rest of .NET and where things have been going from framework to core and now .NET 5 and .NET 6. So uh, there, we didn't uh, make the .NET 5 transition. You may have heard there was a you know little, little pandemic going on and uh, we all stayed home. So we kind of stretched ourselves out um, and decided that we would be better targeting .NET 6. So there are a couple of bullets here. So what is this thing? Uh, it is definitely about cross-platform native UI. So when we think about what we're building, what you're building, um, we're thinking first about your application, not the platform. Um, because typically, this is how the designers, your users, uh, and you as developers are thinking about your applications. You're not thinking about or wanting to think too much about what the underlying Android, iOS, Mac OS, Windows is doing, um, which is odd to say, you know, uh, coming to a call that is the WinUI call, it's a Windows uh, specific call. So I know that I'm speaking a little bit to uh, not the choir. Um, but uh, just kind of sharing a little bit of how we perceive the world and how the customers that come to Xamarin and .NET MAUI typically perceive uh, the application development world, um, which many of you are. I've seen plenty of people in the, uh, in the comments that we know. Um, so one of the other key things that we're doing in this unification into .NET is uh, the project system. So uh, Xamarin was acquired by Microsoft, what, five and a half-ish years ago, um, five years ago. And so actually we know it was five years ago because uh, a bunch of our teammates were celebrating their five-year anniversary, which is pretty cool. So hey, congratulations, everybody. Um, so uh, because it was you know kind of born outside, right, in almost that alt.net world, um, it uh, it has its own project system hooks that were kind of hacked in to, to make things work with Visual Studio. Um, it integrated as best it could, but it was uh, done outside. Now that we are all in um, and more pieces of the puzzle have been open sourced, uh, we're able to integrate much more tightly. And so that's coming in .NET 6. So your, your CS proj will drastically be reduced from what you see today in your Android and iOS head projects to a very nice, clean, pleasant SDK style. Um, it's also going to have full support for multi-targeting. We're working closely with both .NET you know, runtime teams as well as Visual Studio teams to make sure we have better and better multi-targeting, which you know, these kinds of things benefit everybody who's using Visual Studio and .NET, which is great. Um, and a lot of that work uh, kind of starts with .NET MAUI. Um, and then of course you can deploy and, and, and debug and hot reload to multiple devices, both desktop and mobile. Uh, we are extending to Mac OS, uh, which is uh, we're using Mac Catalyst in terms of the what we call the back end or the implementation underneath .NET MAUI. Because um, you can think of .NET MAUI as that cross-platform layer that gives you that consistency of API, uh, the consistency of uh, look and feel or differentiation of look and feel depending on what your goals are. Um, and then underneath, once that's running on the, on the platform, what is it using to render UI? What are, how do you access those APIs? Um, and then we have you know, clear, uh, well-defined ways that are getting a lot easier in .NET MAUI for you to go down into WinUI, go down into uh, Mac Catalyst or UI Kit or Android widgets and do the things that you need to do there um, that may be very custom to your application. Um, so this is all coming in .NET 6. Uh, that was mostly what I wanted to share there. 
Um, Maddie, why don't you talk just to quickly about some of the tooling things? Let me flip through some slides and see if there's actually anything worth doing here. We're not doing a demo, sorry. Um, but Maddie, why don't you talk about some of the tooling things that we're doing in .NET 6, and then I will cover some of these uh, pull requests and kind of the current state of WinUI. Yeah, fantastic. Um, oh my gosh, so that was a, Dave had a great summary. I mean, there's a lot of stuff going on under the hood to kind of create this nice succinct story that's like, it's just gonna be great. Um, but I think on the tooling side of the, the house, we're really focused on uh, making the developer experience as simple and consistent kind of across .NET as possible. So you should be able to easily go from working on your WinUI app or your ASP.NET Core app or your Blazor app or your Maui app and kind of switch between them and feel like you're in a somewhat familiar environment and you have a lot of the tools you need um, to succeed in all those different places. So one of the things that we're working on um, is .NET Hot Reload. Very exciting. Um, I keep calling it C Sharp Hot Reload and I keep being reminded it's not C Sharp Hot Reload. It's also VB and maybe F Sharp and all the things Hot Reload down the line. Um, and I, I shouldn't be so narrow about it, but it is <laughs> a really great feature uh, for all, across the .NET stack. Um, and, and the first kind of workloads that are getting it are Blazor and Maui, and then we're gonna continue to roll it out. Um, but it's kind of like an evolution slash um, maybe more modern approach to edit and continue, which I'm sure you know if you've used UWP or WPF. Um, so you don't have to set a breakpoint, you just, you change your code, you hit the button and it's gonna put the new code in your app and then you can just kind of run it um, however you need to trigger that function, whether it's by pressing a button or loading a page or whatever it is. Um, so that is something we're super excited for and, and previews have actually slowly started in the .NET 6 previews. You can you can now use .NET Watch with um, Blazor and start playing around with it there, but more to come on that um, in, in the next couple months. And then Dave mentioned the single project experience, which has a lot of really great benefits, but for me, the things that I like to call out the most are like, you can write one app manifest. Um, you can put your app icon in one place. You can put your splash screen in one place. You can put all your images in one place. Instead of having to maintain copies of all of these, the Windows way or the iOS way or the Android way. Um, so if you, you know, you might be someone who's really good with the Windows asset catalog and then you flip over to the iOS one and you're like, what is this? Oh, no more of that. It's all just one, one big project with all your stuff in it um, and it's it's nicely organized and and we do the right thing depending on the platform you're on um, and the same thing with you know certain permissions um, which is super helpful of course like checking off access wi-fi on ios and android and windows are three completely different things you have to find and check off so we can make that as easy as possible um, and yeah and, and then the kind of all up beautiful thing about dotnet maui is that Everything kind of in .NET 6 is running on the same base class library. So you can use whatever packages you want as long as they work with .NET 6. So, and most pa .NET 5 packages too, because um, it's all kind of the same, same brains there. So really, if you have a Windows app that is, you know, using a bunch of really specific packages and those packages get bumped to support .NET 6 and then you want to try out .NET MAUI, you can, in most cases, reuse a lot of the packages. Um, as long as they're not doing like super specific operating system stuff, then of course you have to find one specific for the other operating systems you're targeting. But for the most part, things are cross-platform. It's pretty cool. Makes it pretty easy. <laughs> right once, run anywhere, as we like to say. So <laughs> Exactly. You know, I, I was thinking, Maddie, um, so there was, uh, many of you may have seen or even participated in, there was a Hacker News thread that trended last night um, or yesterday that was about .NET MAUI and uh, you know, Microsoft development in general. And uh, one of the comments I saw was, you know, wow, the the, the Blazor hot reload, uh, .NET hot reload is super fast. And they were really excited about it as compared to what we have today for XAML hot reload. Um, and I was I was a little jealous because where did that work come from? It came from, it started as the seeds of that project came from our from our team. Um, and so, but of course, we're all .NET and we're all Microsoft, so we all benefit from it. But, you know, you get a little, you get a little possessive. You're like, oh, man, I wanted to have our names associated. But it's fine. It's fine. Clearly, I'm, I'm dealing with my emotions and I'm dealing with my feelings and, and we'll get over it. Um, well, let me jump back over to my, because uh, I can share faster now. I, I've done this twice. Let me share my screen again. 
So uh, where we stand with with Maui right now um, in terms of supporting WinUI 3 uh, is when when 05, 0.5 uh, was released, we quickly adopted that, um, brought it in. And of course, uh, we've been working, our engineers working with the WinUI team engineers and figuring things out. And on, they've been awesome to help unblock us when we hit issues um, and give us guidance, which is great. Thank you, Ryan and team um, and Miguel. Miguel is here too. Um, and so where we stand right now is we're implementing these handlers. Now, th this is a big difference. This is a big step forward evolutionary wise. Um, it was probably not the right word to use, but uh, in terms of how we actually realize the native platform controls. So this is uh, unwrapping the controls. They're no longer doubled up. Um, we are also mapping properties one-to-one. -one. Um, so we have very easy to test code, um, easy to optimize code, as well as very easy to contribute um, some of these things. So what you see here on the screen uh, are what we have in progress in terms of handlers. So as you look in here, um, some of these are grouped up because we had Android and iOS first. Um, we had those things working first. We were waiting for the 05 release. Now that we have it, we're making progress on the WinUI side of things. Um, and so we're doing them more in bulk. And you can see that Javier uh, has been doing all of this work. So everybody needs to go buy Javier a coffee because he apparently is going to single-handedly bring WinUI to Maui. Pretty cool. Um, but we do have quite a few community contributors as well who have been um, bringing in handlers, lighting things up. And it's mostly go look at the code in the uh, Xamarin Forms repo where things are implemented, harvest that bit, drop it into a very well-defined handler that's like super easy to read, super easy to use. Um, and then you can go you can go from there and, and you can be celebrated as a contributor to Microsoft Open Source. So these things will get merged uh, quickly. Um, and then we'll have uh, more and more native Maui with WinUI 3 running uh, when we come up to build later in May. Um, and to some of the other uh, things going on in the Maui space, and of course this is the GitHub where you can find all the good information. Um, I've started adding these quick docs. So if you want to find out how do I get started, we have this cool utility called Maui Check. It's a .NET tool. Um, from Jonathan Dick Reth, who is uh, the lead on the Maui team. So uh, this is kind of your doctor tool, right? You run this from the command line. It evaluates your system, tells you what you have installed, tells you what you could install. Uh, you just follow the interactive guide, and it sets everything up, which is super useful when you're dealing with multi-platform setup because look at all these things that you have to get aligned, right? It's It's not very straightforward, but this tool makes it super easy. So I highly recommend using that to get yourself set up. Uh, right now, everything is command line driven. We'll, we will have uh, Visual Studio support um, for templates and debugging and, and multi um, device selection and things like that. That's all coming. Um, and so hope to celebrate that soon. For now though, use your favorite code editor. Here's mine, mine's Visual Studio code. Don't know about you. Um, and then you can you can edit from here. Just follow these steps, and you're up and running. And then uh, if you want some additional information about some of the architectural things that we're doing, I've started adding some guides here. So what does startup look like? How are we uh, kind of bootstrapping your application from a minimal standpoint? Um, and then you know what are we doing to enable things like configuring of fonts? If you want to give it a nice convenient alias. Um, how do you include fonts? This is one of those things we call a single project feature where you can just drop all your fonts in a folder, tell your project system that you want to go ahead and bring those into your project so you can use them and you can run, you can use them immediately. Um, and then for third party control vendors, for you yourself, you can write any of these hosting extensions. Um, here's an example of how we're doing this with Essentials. Essentials is the library within Maui that allows you to do things like GPS and all the non-UI cross-platform things, um, accessing your photos. Uh, I think we might have contacts in there these days. Um, yeah, a lot of those so sorts of features which most people are using, uh, setting up maps, version tracking. So it's a nice, convenient, singular place. Uh, whereas in the past, before .NET MAUI, um, you would have to go into three, four, 
five places to configure all of these things, whereas now one convenient place for you to do that. Um, and then in terms of compatibility, should you be bringing forward Xamarin Forms code, uh, third-party vendor code, uh, whatever you might have, and you need to uh, enable those things as opposed to using the new MAUI implementations, we have these new ways for you to register handlers. Um, so you can register a compatibility renderer for a handler. Uh, you can also um, uh, point to an assembly and just say, go get me everything from that assembly so you don't have to type out a bunch of stuff like this. Because um, we know that several customers have um, a huge library of custom work that they've built up over the past seven years, because this is a seven-year-old code base, generally speaking. Um, but again, huge evolutionary step forward. Um, so I want to call attention to that, point you to these things. Um, how you can customize controls. You may have heard of custom renderers in the past. Well, uh, that is a thing of the past. And so this bit of code right here as an example, uh, or this one as an example, removing the underline on an entry for Android, that annoying, uh, I call it a goatee. It's that little you know line at the bottom of the entry you just want to get rid of, but you can't. Uh, this is all you got to do. Super easy. Um, I mean, unless you get paid by the keystroke, I guess. Uh, but this is uh, much more straightforward. All right, Maddie, stop me from rambling. What else should we talk about? I, this is great. I don't know. I'm just trying to keep up with the chat. People are very excited. Nice to see. <laughs> Apparently, Morton is already shipping uh, ArcGIS runtime support for One UI. So <laughs> that's awesome. Morton, you're a machine. That's crazy. Um, <laughs> We do also impressive. have this blog post, real quickly I'll point out, on the yep. .NET blog when Preview 3 went out. So with each preview, we'll continue to update everyone on status through the blog posts. Um, and then as we get documentation lined up closer to November, uh, you'll start to see information appearing there also. But uh, you can see the .NET bot right at home inside of a WinUI desktop application. Look how happy he is. And this will get much better looking. Obviously, this is early days. You know, you don't you don't look at a house that's down to the studs and say, oh, that's beautiful. We'll get there. All right. Uh, let's see what else is going on uh, Windows and WinUI related. Have there been good questions in the chat? I wasn't uh, paying attention. We can totally answer some on the fly. Yes, Poor if Anna you guys back. also, if you just want to jump right into Q&A now, we can totally sure. do that. All right, cool. Let me switch us over to our Q&A screen, which is just adding me in here. Uh, folks, with UI team, if you guys want to go ahead and turn on your cameras and join the party, um, I think we can get into our Q&A. Look at all these beautiful people. <laughs> I wore a hat because my hair was not behaving today. Been I there, David. I've been there. <laughs> yeah, I'm... Uh... I'm with Bolty. My hair is getting long enough now that it'll tickle my microphone if I don't switch it over to my laptop. <laughs> also been there. Yeah. Fantastic. <laughs> All right. You guys All need right. to get the .NET scrunchie pack. It's great. They're high quality scrunchies. Oh, wow. They have .NET bot on them. It's oh, so man. cute. <laughs> Very cool. That's amazing. Very cool. Yeah, they're really cool. I'll put the link in the YouTube if it lets me. <laughs> All right. Anna, are we uh, ready to jump right into q yeah. here? Yeah, we're ready. Awesome. Okay, so uh, I have a ton of questions for the Maui team. Let me actually start with one, though, that'll be a bit of a discussion topic between the Maui team and uh, the WinUI team. Uh, Matt Lacey is asking, is there anything that can be done or will be possible in a native WinUI 3 project that won't be possible in a .NET Maui project? Does anyone want to uh, start taking that one up? <laughs> That's interesting. There shouldn't be. Um, let's start there. Uh, so if there is, uh, we should unblock that because the expectation is um, as long as you can do it in .NET with WinUI 3, all of that should be possible in a MAUI project because we are literally delivering a WinUI, you know, artifact at the end uh, and we're, we're using the same APIs. So yeah, 
absolutely should be able to do anything. Now, in terms of developer experience, what the XAML experience is, for example, I think that there are some differences there. Um, you know, if you're used to uh, the lookless controls and completely doing that, you can still do that, but you would have to drop into the WinUI layer of your uh, application cake, if you will, and you'd have to do those things there and expose them in the cross-platform space, as opposed to doing that in the .NET MAUI XAML. So that's perhaps one difference. But again, it's it's not something you couldn't do. It's just, you know, it's not going to be uh, convenient. Ryan, you have any thoughts? That's exactly what I was going to answer. Um, I think the developer experience may be a little bit different, but otherwise, yeah, everything should be possible. And if it isn't, um, then we should know and make it possible. So yeah. you covered it great. That's awesome. All right. Well, another question for a Maui team, uh, for the Maui team, coming from Saint Forever, who is asking regarding .NET Maui, how would it target Xbox and other platforms since WinUI is focused primarily on desktop? And I'll <laughs> also probably tag in Ryan to a answer that uh, assertion about desktop focus. Uh, can you ask it again, so just because I was typing? Oh yeah, sorry, no problem. Saint Forever is asking regarding .NET Maui, how would it target Xbox and other platforms since WinUI is a, only about desktop? So, so kind of from a WinUI or from a sorry, a Maui standpoint, ahead, um, there are things you could do to take your Maui application to the Xbox, um, but you would need to uh, bring in the platform that would run on the Xbox. So. If there is a day when WinUI 3 and Project Reunion runs on uh, the Xbox, then your MAUI app runs there. Um, uh, absent that, you can bring over the existing UWP code, uh, work with anybody to light that up inside of uh, your MAUI solution, and that can run in a compatibility mode out of the box um, on the Xbox. So there are ways to do this, and. Part of it is because the way in which we've architected Maui it is to be as flexible as possible while retaining performance and fidelity when it comes to the native platforms. So I know that one of the big things, Ryan, that you guys have done with the WinUI library is extract it right from, from Windows. So that decoupling creates so much power and flexibility. Well, that's what we've done in, in Maui is we have taken the, the UI control layer that you typically work with, the API, and we've extracted that and decoupled it from the platform implementations, which we used to call renderers, now we're calling handlers. It's a very loose relationship now that we're not using bindable object everywhere. And depending on that, um, the native platforms don't know about the cross-platform side anymore where they did before. So we gain a lot of flexibility there, which enables us to go to XAML, to Blazor, to Comet, which is another experiment that's C Sharp MVU. Um, so, you know, we we are we are geared so that we can walk hand in hand with the WinUI team to deliver the latest of what they're doing when they do it. It's kind of you know the goal, right? That we give you the latest and greatest on each platform um, without you know compromise. Yeah, that's great. And I'll just add to that, um, you know, that story is, I think, similar in the direct, if you're writing directly to WinUI, we still have WinUI 2. It's still our recommended path, our golden path for being able to uh, create new uh, ex uh, experiences that run um, on any of the UWP class devices like an Xbox. And we're going to continue to invest in that for at least the next couple of years. Um, and that's going to be a path forward, at least until we can get to the point where Reunion is able to go and um, cover, so, cover some of those scenarios. Right now, Reunion is very desktop focused. So um, there's, there's still a, um, a pathway there for people who want to who want to do that. Um, and yeah. Ryan, that is a perfect transition to a question from Shahid Malik, who is asking, uh, when will UWP be updated to, uh, to WinUI so Xbox can take advantage of the features? Win32 and WinUI 3 is great, uh, but not something I'm finding a serious path forward for universal Windows apps. Or first, I should yeah. say, not a serious path forward for universal Windows as a category. Yep. I'm assuming at the start of that question you meant um, WinUI 3, and when will WinUI 3 be updated to go and run in those places? And uh, uh, Yeah, yeah, great. And... Um, uh, the answer to that is we don't have a, a specific time frame on when we're going to be able to run something like uh, a reunion app on an Xbox. Um, it's a, it's not going to be this year for sure. 
Um, and it's something that we'll reevaluate as we plan further out than six months, which is roughly about how far out we plan right now. Um, so that's why I can say pretty confidently it won't be this year. Um, but um, until then, like I said, we have the UWP WinUI 2 stack. When we make new features and controls for WinUI, we make them for both. Um, so like we introduce new controls, they get introduced in WinUI 2 and in WinUI 3 um, to make sure that there's a good solution there. So when we have a time frame for that, um, we'll definitely share it. Perfect. All right, another question for the Maui team. Uh, this one's coming from Jeremy, who's asking, any thoughts on the future of Blend? If Maui's replacing all the things, will Blend be updated to support it? Maddie. Oh, you're muted, Maddie. <laughs> <laughs> I can answer it. I mean, I just I, I wanted to give you a chance. Maddie, oh, you can't unmute. Teams is not behaving. Oh, I see. Oh. Can, can we Moment unmute? of silence for Teams, no, please. No, we can't unmute you. <laughs> uh, we can try and come back to that one in a moment here. Sure. I'll uh, I'll grab something else. Um, uh, let me let me grab something for the WinUI team for a moment. All right, Ryan. Uh, we have a request from Marvin, who's asking, "Can you speak about the plan for open sourcing again? I understand that it is somewhat of a high priority uh, now that WinUI three stable has shipped. What is the goal when you say open sourcing WinUI? Will the code just be uh, mirrored there, or is the plan to open up the development process as well?" Perhaps the end goal is something like what the .NET project is doing, uh, where they have public planning, public issues, live streamed API meetings, public code reviews, and more. Yeah, great questions. Um, I think I'll answer them in reverse order. So first, um, the you know what is the what is the plan for open source? The eventual plan that we want to get to for sure um, is full open source participation. Um, from both us and the community, meaning the engineering that we do is fully open. We are also able to accept um, new ideas from the community, take PRs, you can build the code, you can test your changes, um, all the stuff that you would expect of like a truly fully open source project. That's definitely the end goal. Um, in terms of how we get there, I would say up until recently, my thinking has been, let's just shoot for that. It's been um, pretty ex a pretty expensive journey for us that we're that we've already traveled quite a ways to try and get to that point because going open source for WinUI we have about eight or nine years of um, closed source coding that has gone into that code base and a lot of that closed source coding calls private APIs in Windows and it does a number of other things that we need to clean up and fix before we can open source it so. We've already been doing a lot of that work. We still have quite a bit left to do. And then there's additional work, which is getting all of our, like how we build our pipelines, our PR process and everything all stood up as well. So there's still, even though we've traveled really a, a pretty great distance in, in getting to open source, we still have a pretty great distance to travel. So we are exploring some intermediate steps um, where maybe we would have the code out, but it doesn't build, or maybe we have the code out and it builds, but we can't accept PRs yet as sort of like a graduated way to get there. And this is really in some ways unique to our situation because we're starting with just such a massive 3 million plus line code base. Um, whereas, this, you know, if this was like a brand new project, it would have been like what WinUI 2 was effectively, it would have been really easy to start open source. So, um, we may be looking at some sort of like a graduated system where we have progressive layers of capability in terms of what can be done and what you can do as a community member to contribute um, as we unfold this. In terms of when, um, I don't have any time frame to share other than we're still making plans for our October release. And then beyond October, we also have to begin figuring out what's the next set of things that we want to do. Um, and open source will fall in there somewhere. And when we have more to share, I'll definitely share it. Awesome. Thanks, Ryan. Uh, let's see. I'll try to grab a question for the Maui team here. Well, yeah, Maddie's oh, back so here. I'm back. So. Oh, Maddie's and back. she's Maddie, unmuted. Quick, hold down the power button, restart the computer, it won't fix. <laughs> wow, so, that's, a, that's, that's so yeah. extreme to unmute. It's I, the new well, yeah, unmute. I, went, I clicked in and the window blacked out and then it was like end process. And I was like, what is this? So I tried to open task manager and that one opened and that was it. I was like, you know what? There's nothing I can do here, but just 
not stand up so like nobody sees my pajama shorts while I'm stuck on the uh, on camera, and then. <laughs> Um, yeah. Okay. So, so blend is a great question. Yes. Let me, uh, uh, let me repeat that question just to make sure our audience has the context here for those just joining. Uh, right. and Maddie, welcome back. Uh, we're excited to have you again, pajamas or otherwise. Um, and so it was, uh, oh man, I just had it. Here it is. Coming from Jeremy, uh, who asked any thoughts on the future of blend. If Maui is replacing all the things, will blend be updated to support it? Yeah, good question. So I, you know, Maui is not replacing all the things, first of all. Maui is just, um, I think someone else said this in the chat maybe, but it's like, it's a superset of all the things. Like we're taking the best and the most necessary of everything and kind of making a, um, you know, like a, like a best guess. I don't know. We're doing as much as we can to make sure that you can target everything cross-platform. So drag and drop design tools. I could, and I, Jeremy, I'm sure I've talked to you about this before, maybe not, but I could go on this rant for like hours about why drag and drop design tools are really hard for different device sizes. So, you know, when you write something like your XAML or you write your, um, you know, if you write C Sharp UI, like it's all responsive. Like the layouts you use and create are going to be responsive to the device size that you're on. And so that involves some tweaking sometimes, because obviously you don't want the app on someone's Android to look the exact same as you'd want on their 1440 monitor. Like you can put buttons in different places and there's different UI paradigms. So we make that all possible in Maui and, and in Xamarin forms with, you know, like kind of the platform specific stuff. But when it comes to design tools, we have not been able to figure out a good way to do that for mobile developers. So we can make it so that you can dr kind of drag and drop in like how they do on Android, this kind of vertical thing. And then you can tweak your layouts and the code behind and all that. Or you can do the desktop way, like what you do with Blend and that has all the animations and it's super powerful, but then it doesn't translate well to mobile. And it's uh, we've put a lot of time and effort into this and we have not come up with a solution that's actually helpful people based on our customer research right that doesn't mean it's not a good idea it is a good idea but the amount of work we'd have to put in to get it to a point where we think it's really going to benefit people is crazy right now so that is just my wraparound answer to say like we have no plans to support blend right now that being said there are a lot of features of blend like i mentioned the animations and transitions and um, a lot of times like the brushes and gradients and stuff like we're trying to make that a lot easier from the code itself um, so hopefully you feel like you need things like blend less, but I'm not writing it out for, I'm not saying absolutely not never. I'm just saying like, we have, we have uncovered, we've dusted off the beast and peeked in and we were like, oh man, never mind. It's not going to happen right now. So <laughs> that's what, that's where we're at. Awesome. Thanks, Maddie. Uh, I have a question now for Ryan who, uh, Ryan, we have Matt Lacey asking if a Maui app can do anything a native WinUI 3 app can do, why build a native WinUI 3 app? If building a Maui app gets you to other platforms too, is effort being wasted on building WinUI 3 specific tooling? That's a great question. Um, I think the first thing to start with is sometimes it is better uh, and more correct to build a Maui app than to build a native WinUI 3 app. Um, I think that one of the biggest um, probably distinguishers there was sort of built into your question, which is cross-plat aspirations or not. Um, if you have cross-plat aspirations, Maui's great. Um, and uh, it will unlock the power of WinUI 3, but it'll also take you beyond Windows, which is really what WinUI 3 focuses on, um, to uh, other platforms and places where you can go and run and play. Um, uh, when you build, and I'll ask uh, David maybe to join me in here, uh, join in with me here on this answer to make sure that I also understand this correctly. But if you are, like, if you want to, if you're writing a Maui app, you should be able to do everything, at least for sure, on Windows um, that a WinUI 3 app can do. I don't know if that is true on other OSs because I could envision something that when UI3 could go it um, um, could invest in that might not be possible on you know on a Mac or might not be possible on 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 some other device um, and uh, and so you know Maui is a cross platform framework that really layers over the native stacks of all of these different um, uh, operating systems and so you you could imagine a situation where if you wrote directly to WinUI 3 you might be able to do something that you couldn't do in a Maui app just be uh, on some other OS 
So that could, that could be potentially one reason. Another reason could be um, if you know you only want to target Windows, then just write directly closer to the metal and the de and sort of do the native Windows developer experience, um, which is what WinUI 3 offers. So there's a difference in the developer experience. There's a difference in flavor of XAML and, and, and other differences as well. So that might be a reason to write directly to WinUI 3. Um, but I, I think probably the highest order bit is what are you targeting? If you're targeting Windows directly, probably makes a lot of sense to just write a WinUI 3 app. And that's really what WinUI 3 is really about. If you're trying to do a cross-plat thing, that was great. David, uh, did I capture that pretty well or do you have yeah, more Yeah, no, that's great. And I'll, I'll add a couple of other things here that you know kind of de-risks the decision up front. Um, you can start a WinUI 3 app and then if you decide, you know what, this this needs to go other places. You can start layering in specific controls and screens that are built in Maui into an existing WinUI 3 code base. So uh, we called that in the old days, forms embedding native forms and things like that. We probably need a new name for it here. Maybe we'll just call it Maui embedding. Um, it's kind of similar to, I think, the XAML islands, except that because we actually are you know, rendering out native UI, uh, there's no context. Uh, you know, I'm not a super expert on XAML Islands, um, but I know that there's slight differences there. So uh, so you have that as an option as well. But uh, yeah, I mean, I wouldn't uh, underestimate the value of, of your existing developer experience. You know your APIs, you, you know how you like to build and construct your, your UI, um, and you're very uh, XAML focused, then uh, WinUI 3 is absolutely going to be there for you and help you to be as productive as, as you need to be. Um, the, uh, the one key difference between the way in which Maui thinks about XAML versus the way I've seen WinUI uh, and UWP and, and WPF, and for that matter, use uh, XAML is that it's it's an, it's not an afterthought, but it's an additional. It's an optional thing in Maui. Yes, we do lead with XAML as a developer experience because we can optimize for it, and it's fairly well understood in the Microsoft developer ecosystem. Um, but it is absolutely optional. We have a lot of developers, um, you know, maybe like I don't I don't want to throw percentages, but maybe like twenty percent that that write all their apps in C sharp and they never touch a lick of XAML. Um, so, you know, that's a difference as well. So there's differences of developer experience, I think, to account for. Yeah, but you can't go wrong. It's not a risk. Start building your app. Awesome. All right, so I've got a question for Scott coming from Mario, who is asking, uh, may we expect performance improvements in the next release? Currently, performance is hindered by memory leaks and exceptions that shouldn't be thrown. Much of this is related to c -sharp slash WinRT interop instability and lack of caching. Does c -sharp slash WinRT pose an upper limit to the performance for WinUI? Right. Uh, thanks, Mario. There are a couple of questions packed in there. We'll take them separately. The uh, The question about stability is, uh, is a good one, interop instability. And uh, we've been closing the gap on that quite a bit. The prior to reunion 0.5.5, which is the servicing release that we just put out a few days ago, the the previous version of WinUI's C Sharp WinRT support was 1.1, uh, which is about five months old now. So there's been a number of stability and performance improvements in that five months. And uh, I'm, I'm hoping that, Mario, when you take a look at 0.5.5 plus uh, reunion, you'll, you'll see some of those. If you do see any issues, specific issues, performance issues that you feel uh, are directly attributed to C-Sharp WinRT, then I'd, I'd really um, encourage you to go to github.com slash Microsoft slash CS1RT slash issues and add a performance issue there. We have uh, about a dozen uh, or so logged perf issues that are labeled performance. That is the top priority right now for the team. Uh, now that we've established functional completeness, we're turning our attention to performance. There are a couple of specific issues that we're aware of that uh, are impacting performance. One of those is uh, interface or parametric interface GUID calculation. We do cache every one of the things that we need to uh, determine with reflection. We cache it on a per type basis, but ideally we would, we would try to eliminate as much of that runtime uh, overhead as possible. So even though we're, we're amortizing that over the run of the app and we're caching where possible, ideally we, we have static GUID determination for those pinterfaces. Uh, another area is events. Uh, the the um, 
type specific caching for uh, event delegates is a bit expensive. So we want to try to improve that as well. We've audited the code base for opportunities uh, where we can find them. And much of the caching opportunities we've already taken advantage of. Runtime callable wrappers, com callable wrappers are cached in both directions. Uh, I will be honest and say that we're not going to see parity with the built-in uh, winner key support that C Sharp and the CLR once had. That's that's just the cost of removing that from the runtime and from the language. But we are continuing to close the gap, and I do think you'll see some improvements with the next reunion update. And I think Mike Hilberg might have some follow-ups as well on performance. I just want to make some comments too. Um, overall, when UI, um, the when UI three. Uh, there's some differences in performance that uh, we're working on. There's, there's some expected differences in WinUI 2 or Windows XAML. Um, everything is rendering straight to a system composition visual. In WinUI 3 or Microsoft XAML, everything's rendering to a swap chain and then the swap chain onto the system visual. And so there's reference set overhead for the swap chain. Another difference between uh, WinUI 2 and WinUI 3 is uh, with WinUI 2, there's only one copy of all the DLLs on disk. Everybody's running the same version. With WinUI 3, you'll be able to have uh, one app using Reunion 0.5 and another app using Reunion 0.8. And so uh, uh, you might get uh, fewer share pages. So that's another place like Scott was talking about where there's, there's some expected differences. Um, but we would love, like we've built some infrastructure. Uh, uh, we've done a bunch of performance work. We've done some infra built some infrastructure so that we're doing more regular performance testing um, so that we can catch regressions if they come in. But uh, uh, we would love to, to know some scenarios that are causing people trouble, some real scenarios that are causing people trouble so that we could uh, take a look at them and have a focus on them. There's, there's a, a million performance things that we could look at, and it's nice to have some focus. Somebody put on the uh, repo a while ago an example of a uh, micro benchmark where they're creating uh, registering dependency properties in a real tight loop, and it had some embarrassing numbers. And we spent some time looking at that, and I think that's where some of the CS1 or T improvements came from. But uh, micro benchmarks can be kind of confusing, you know, uh, in the uh, isolated case in context of a real app. Maybe it looks worse in isolation than it does in a, in a full app. So. Uh, if there are uh, real examples that you're running into that you can bring up on the repo, it'd be great because it would give us something uh, to prioritize our, our focus. Awesome. Thanks, Scott, and thanks, Mike. I've got a question now for Miguel. Uh, Athif is uh, asking, when can we expect parity between the UWP app model and Win32? Will Reunion 1.0 uh, bring parity between app models and completely remove the lines between both? Okay, let's start with what the application model means to us, because I'm sure that means different things for different people. So, for example, the application model is everything that set up the environment where the application is going to be executed and the application lifecycle. For instance, uh, the way that the application is activated, for example, command line, when you double click in a file, the way that the application is instantiated is a single instance, multi instance plus how the application respond to the operating system uh, states like shutdown, sleep, and so forth. So parity is a very strong word to use in terms of the application model. Uh, for instance, the UWP app model derives from the Windows 8 app model. Um, perhaps some functionality that we implemented there doesn't make sense anymore. So parity is a word that I really don't like to use in this context. I prefer to use something like similarities. So, and when we think about adding similarities between UWP app model and Win32 app model, there are three top areas that uh, comes into my mind. The first one is the activation kind. The second one is the uh, the instantiation instantiation of the application, and the second, and the third one is the uh, power notification like suspend, resume, uh, shutdown. So, the Union 0.5 only support launch activation and multi-instance by default, although you can uh, support more, more, more behavior with the Win32 APIs. The good news is that 
the, the reunion, there is a reunion component called application life cycle that is going to bring several of the UWP uh, model behaviors into Win32. For example, uh, UWP can respond uh, crazy amounts of activation kinds, like something like 44 types, although the majority of the application are only using four. And these new reunion application lifecycle APIs are going to allow you to respond to these four most uh, uh, used uh, activation kinds, like launch, file, protocol, and the startup, which is something that happens when you uh, uh, in the login screen. It's going to be super easy just to use these activation kinds, just a couple of lines of code. The, also, the, these uh, application lifecycle uh, reunion APIs will make it easier to specify when your application will be single instant or multi instant. You have just to uh, hook up several events. And the last thing is the power notification API that will allow you to receive message when the system needs to suspend or resume your application. So yes, it's a reunion will bring some similarities between UWP and Win32. We are trying to close all this gap. That's awesome. Thanks, Miguel. All right, uh, we've got five minutes left, and I think three questions I'll try and run through if we've got the time for it. I'll uh, start with a few for the Maui team. Maui, or uh, uh, Maddie, uh, we have Dot Morton asking, when will MS Build slash VS 2019 support uh, .NET, uh, .NET 6.0 iOS? Net 6.0 iOS and Net 6.0 Android. That one was a tongue twister. Yeah, um, I saw that chat question in the chat, and I was like, oh, "Don't we already?" And then I messaged like four people, and then they all responded to Dave and not me, apparently. But it already supports it, so you can totally go use all those things. I mean, .NET 6 is in preview, right? So you have to make sure you check off the little checkbox, I think, in Tools Options Preview Features that says, um, you know, allow me to use the .NET Core Preview SDKs, but it'll all work. You're good to go. MS Build supports it. Um, you know, the IDE supports it. If you're talking specifically about uh, MAUI features like single project and stuff, that's coming in um, as previews to kind of the later VS 2019, um, but really the focus is going to be for .NET 6 and VS 2022. Um, but yeah, there will be preview support throughout the rest of the BS 2019 wave. Awesome. All right. And so another question, Maddie, uh, is that uh, Jenny is asking, uh, you said you can do a lot of awesome things with Maui. Is this all also possible with Xamarin or at least something I can use Xamarin to access? Uh, so maybe if you have a moment here, you can expand on the Xamarin versus Maui line for us. Great question. So we've heard this a lot um, from kind of our enterprise customers like, what do I do with my Xamarin app? So Maui is really an evolution of Xamarin Forms. So you can think of it as Xamarin Forms V next, V6, you know, we're on four, Forms 5, whatever now. Um, so there's gonna be a bit of an upgrade process, right? You're gonna have to make sure that your project file is ready for .NET 6. Um, and, you know, you, there will be some controls you might wanna update to get the more performant Maui rendering handler work. But really, um, it is just kind of the next version of Xamarin Forms. So if you have a Xamarin Forms app now, it's just going to become a Maui app in the future. If you don't have a Xamarin Forms app now, you can start building one and then make it Maui. You can start a Maui app later. I mean, you might as well start it now because it's very similar. Um, yeah, Dave just came off mute and he raised his hand. So that's how I know he's got some some knowledge to drop. <laughs> I'm, I'm curious to see, because I see that we're in the gallery, the in the, in the gallery view, whatever that thing is if my hand would be raised. Anyway, um, so what I wanted to comment on is, uh, maybe I lost my train of thought. Oh, um, so we have a balancing act, right, when describing the relationship between Xamarin and Maui. On the one hand, we wanna make it clear that Maui is a really fresh start, that we've taken all the things we've learned over the past seven plus years, and we're addressing those core things, you know? Not everything, but the things that are super impactful to your applications that we've we've learned over that time. Performance, extensibility, ease of uh, customization, reliability, all those sorts of things. Um, so we wanna give that confidence. Hey, this is great. This is really a big step forward. On the other hand, we wanna give the confidence to those who have existing Xamarin investment 
look, you don't have to rewrite your applications. You're going to be able to bring it forward. The migration steps are going to be smooth and silky, and we're going to do our best to understand. We're working directly with customers now um, to work through migration steps with them so that we have deep pain you know, we understand the pain, and we can we can address those things uh, so that come November, you have a much better and easy easy experience. So you'll hear us saying both, uh, it's just the next version, and you'll hear us saying, it's totally new. And you're like, well, wait a second, which one is it? Well, it depends on who we're trying to talk to and what we're trying to uh, express. And I'll lower my hand. <laughs> awesome. All right, and so uh, we're right about to be a time here, so I'll end on a question for uh, Ryan, actually. Uh, and Maui team, I think this will be something for you to weigh in on as well. Uh, our community is looking to understand uh, how we recommend them looking at Maui versus Uno platform. Great, did you direct that at me? So I thought you did direct that at me. I, I did, I did. Okay. You, you're kind of our champion of Uno platform, but if that's something we want to send right to the Maui team, by all means. Okay, I, I might not be the most qualified person on this call to answer that question. Um, maybe Maddie and David have, have more that they want to chime in too. Um, obviously, you know, one of the differences, uh, again, there is um, developer experience. I mean, there's a lot of differences between Maui and Uno. Um, they both uh, have similar aims in terms of trying to offer um, a cross-platform solution for people who want to go and develop apps. Um, I think they're both great platforms for what it's worth. Um, we have worked closely with the Uno team. Um, the folks over there are fantastic. Um, we work closely uh, with David and Maddie and the Maui team. Um, and so two you know, really excellent options. There are, um, there are developer experience differences there. They're produced by different companies. That matters to some people as well. Um, and, uh, you know, but I, I would say you should analyze your own requirements, the places that you wanna take your app what you what you feel comfortable with in terms of developer experience and the platform that you want to go and invest in, um, and then you know make an informed decision on it. Um, there's no blanket statement that I can make there about like we'll go use this or go use that. Um, I think it's I think it's very situationally dependent on what your needs are. Um, and David and Maddie, I'll invite you to add anything in there as well, since you guys spend even more of your much more of your day than I do thinking about um, your your cross platform offering and and uh, what its strengths are as well. Yeah, we 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 talk a lot about this and we think a lot about this because we want it to be an easier decision for developers. I mean, I'll start off first of all with it shares a lot of technology, a lot of the same underpinnings. It's you're in .NET, so if you're using .NET, I'm happy. Um, you know, if if you say, hey, I'm really being successful with Uno. I, you know, even though Maui is is our baby and, and we're certainly trying to make it as useful for customers as possible, it's really about you being successful. Um, if we build a product that I'm in love with, but nobody uses it and it's not helping anybody change the world for the better, forget it. It's like that was a waste. Um, so what's going to be most useful to you? When we look at, uh, you know, how Uno is positioned as compared to .NET Maui, uh, some standout things are with Uno, you get the lookless controls, you get the uh, skia or graphic drawn uh, theming out of the box. You can fall back to platform theming and access those things as well. Um, you get web and web assembly um, as part of the offering. Um, and then they go broader in terms of uh, some you know, down level reach and things like that. So if those things are important to your project and uh, you would benefit from using those things, then that's a great way to go. Um, we take a different approach. Um, and uh, you know, I'm often very jealous of, of Uno and what Jerome and, and the team over there is able to do because it's like the old Xamarin days, right? You're like, you're, you're moving fast. You're, you're doing exciting things, and it's like, oh, man, um, that was so much fun. Why are they so cool? Um, but, hey, uh, if you're looking for what Maui delivers in terms of you know the desktop and the mobile and focusing on making those the best that they can be, um, you know, and any of the advancements that we make, again, you know, the rest of .NET, no matter where you are, inside or outside of Microsoft, in the ecosystem, you benefit from these things. So um, I feel like you end up using our stuff anyway. <laughs> so you really, again, you can't go wrong. Uh, I think Ryan was on point. Uh, what are the requirements? What are the things that are important to your company, to your project? Uh, and make a good decision from that. So, um, yeah. 
Oh no, you're muted, Savoy. You made it the whole call, and then at the very end. <laughs> I just didn't want my keyboard to be rattling off during your answer. Um, I think uh, that's all we have time for, though there's lots of awesome questions in chat. Uh, for anyone who didn't get their questions answered here, please do feel invited to go over to our repo and file questions or discussion topics. Um, I'll hand the mic over to the Maui team real quick just to uh, give a shout out to any location where they continue to, you know, engage you uh, as a community with questions and see answers. Um, but then uh, we'll hand it off to Anna to close out the call. So David, Maddie, over to you real quick. If there's somewhere you'd like customers to uh, go chat with your team. Uh, we are on Twitter, of course. I mean, isn't that uh, where a lot of communication happens these days? Um, I don't think I have a TikTok. Maddie probably has a TikTok. Um, so David Ortnow, uh, and I think it's uh, Maddie Legere one yeah, on Twitter. Uh, you know, the .NET repo uh, for, for Maui is a great place. If you do want to join us in terms of contributing, we do have a Discord where we host conversations about uh, evolving the platform. So you can find those links and more on, on .NET slash Maui on GitHub. So that's a, that's a great place to start. Thank you very much for having us, by the way. This was uh, super exciting. It's our first time. It's our first time. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you both so much for joining us. We are also super excited and happy to have you. Um, I'm going to switch over to our PowerPoint. Let me put my face back up there uh, and just let's wrap up this call. Thanks everyone for staying a couple minutes over. Uh, thanks team for answering all of these great questions. Um, and yeah, we will see you all next time. So thanks for watching and bye. Bye.